This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Is it okay to hunt animals for their meat? That might seem like an absurd ethical question from the mouth of a meat eater. And indeed, maybe it is absurd. I mean, I eat the meat of domestic animals all the time. Assuming I've erected an ethical framework that allows for killing chickens on a farm, would not that same framework allow for killing deer in a forest? It should, right? I mean, most chickens live their whole lives in buildings like these. At least deer get to run around outside before we eat them. And yet I confess a certain moral discomfort with hunting. I grew up in rural central Pennsylvania where lots of the other guys hunted every season. I never did. And I suppose looking back on it, my problem with it wasn't so much with the act itself, but rather the, the enjoyment of the act. It's kind of like proctology. You know, colorectal surgeons. I'm really glad there are highly trained physicians who specialize in human butts. I may need a butt doctor one day. But it is kind of weird that at some point in this person's training, they thought to themselves, wow, you know what I'd really like to do for the rest of my career? I'd like to treat problems that are up people's butts. Similarly, I'm very, very glad that there are people who want to raise, kill, skin, gut animals and cut up their meat for my consumption. I'm just a little bit suspicious of people who would do that for fun. But if I'm honest, there's a class dimension here. I may have grown up out in the woods, but I was not a rural kid. I'm the child of educated urban professionals who commuted to and from the woods. Hunting was the hobby of the kids who actually lived and worked on those farms my folks commuted past every day. Compared to me, those farm kids I shared a school bus with were less removed from the days when people had to hunt as a means of survival. Whether I was aware of it or not, my pointed eschew of recreational deer hunting was an expression of status, and a rather obnoxious one at that. No, people in my caste, we do not dirty our hands with that unpleasantness. You peasants, you go out and have fun in the woods with your guns. But now, as an older and hopefully wiser man, my attitudes are quite different. I'm trying to spend more time outside, and I'm trying to get closer to where my food comes from. Those two goals point to hunting as logically as they point to gardening. So I'm back to my original question. Is it okay to hunt animals? Well, obviously that's gonna depend on the animal, right? Like I'm pretty sure that sniping some endangered apex predator from the comfort of your Land Rover just to somehow prove how tough you are, well, that's one of the douchiest things a human being can do. But what about like white-tailed deer here in North America? Scientists believe they are probably at their pre-Columbian population levels these days, hardly endangered. This may be because humans have killed so many of the deer natural predators, or because we've chopped up the forests and created lots of places where trees meet grass, deer thrive on those edges. Nobody knows for sure, but... They are just good at being alive and can increasing their population. That is Tess Gingery. She is a wildlife biologist who actually did her master's thesis at Penn State, chomping around in the woods where I grew up, studying deer populations. Hey, how'd she get into the big game game? That's an interesting question. I grew up with firearms. My dad was really into the American Revolution. So I grew up with like black powder muskets. And so I was comfortable around firearms, but not hunting. We didn't, we weren't a hunting family. I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. So more of like a city urban upbringing um, and went through periods of veganism, vegetarianism, came to Pennsylvania and got deeper into kind of just the large mammal world and the research and kind of worked through some of my, you know, like how I felt about things and read the le research and stuff. And I actually have, I harvested my first year last year. So it was nice that I was comfortable with firearms because I trusted myself to make a good shot. A good shot. That is a shot that kills the animal quickly, thus sparing it much suffering. Assuming that we're talking about hunting an animal that has a healthy population, and assuming that we're actually gonna eat it and not just hang its dismembered head on our wall to impress our douchey friends, well, then I think the ethical question of hunting hinges primarily on whether or not we can provide the animal with a quick, painless death. But then again, quick and painless compared to what? Well, this is actually what Gingri researched in grad school, how deer normally die, specifically fawns, the babies. About half of the fawns in her study groups survive to six months. Kind of went out and caught fawns 
and put collars on them that we could track their movements. And when the collar remains motionless for four hours, uh, it sends a signal that says, hey, I'm probably dead. So we go to that individual (laughs) and um, sometimes they're not dead. They just spring up and we're like, okay, you were just like really taking a long nap. (laughs) But uh, usually there, you know, there is a carcass there. And so that's like a CSI field investigation, right? Like gloves on, like hair pulled back and taking pictures. And before you touch the carcass, you're taking a lot of pictures of the area and you're looking around for any signs of predators. And indeed, predation was the number one cause of death among the fawns in Gingri's two study groups. That's consistent with prior findings going back half a century. In Pennsylvania, we see a kind of a mix of black bears and coyotes as like your top main predators. But if you're looking at Overall, um, probably I think coyotes are the number one predator for like, if you're looking at the entire range of white-tailed deer, black bears coming in at a second and bobcats are kind of like a, those are the big three, we would say. As you can imagine, the big three generally do not hit the deer with a good shot. But that's young deer. Studies that look at adult deer find that human hunting, harvest, well, that's the number one cause of death. So right after harvest comes vehicle collisions. Fun story, when I was 17, I was driving through a snowstorm and I came over a blind hill and there was a deer. I swerved to the left, I overcorrected to the right, and the next thing I remember is the smell of airbags. Lots of people have similar stories, but theirs often end with a game warden coming out a half an hour later to put an end to the deer's suffering. My deer got away. Um, And then after that, after you see those human sources, you kind of come down into disease and then starvation and then predation. So if Tess Gingery were a deer, knowing everything she knows, which way out would she choose? (laughs) I mean, I would choose being harvested because, I mean, a lot of the time when you're being harvested, let's say you might be as a deer you might be shot and you would have no idea that it was coming and it's a quick death with a good shot and with a predation you're kind of being chased you know if you're if you're going to look at a deer as if it was a human with human emotions which is totally fine but if you're looking at it that way then that's how i would separate it i would rather kind of not know it's coming and (laughs) that's so i would rather be harvested than predation because it can be quite the chase and it can not be as instantaneous sometimes, so yeah. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking false choice. It's not just between dying from predation and dying from hunting. Couldn't a deer just die happily of normal old age? If like old age, so deer like eat and they grind their food kind of, so they grind their teeth away. So if a deer was to escape all the bad things out there in the woods, what might happen is they would starve to death because they wear their teeth down so much that they can't eat anymore. So that would be a natural cause of like old age death in a deer. Now you might be saying, you might be saying, so what? So what if basically all animals meet horrific deaths in the wild? That is nature. And we have no right to interfere just because we want a nice saddle of venison. Well, I think that is a perfectly cogent argument. But broadly speaking, responsible hunting probably does not increase animal suffering, at least not in animals like deer. It may even do the opposite. If you have too many individuals in the population, what's going to happen to those deer? Well, you're going to see a lot, an increase in vehicle collisions, likely. So you're kind of swapping one death for a different type, potentially, right? But you're also likely going to see an increase in diseases. If you have a lot more individuals in the population, diseases are easier to swap as they get closer and closer to each other. You want to see a real horror show? Google chronic wasting disease in deer or prion disease. It's thought to be caused by a prion, which is basically a defective protein. This disease turns deer into starving zombies, and it may be exacerbated by people trying to feed deer. If one infected deer stumbles up to a feeder, it is far more likely to spread the disease to other animals than it would grazing on wild food. As with most big topics in food ethics, Hunting is way more complicated than it may seem. 
A much easier choice is what you should use to build and run a website, and that is Squarespace. Easy. Everything you need to grow your business online. You can start building an online store or any other kind of site for free. You don't even need to give them a credit card. None of these templates look like a good starting place to you? No problem. You can start from scratch. Throw in a picture, throw in a product block to offer something for sale, and you're off. Squarespace handles all the money stuff for you. Squarespace sites are great for service businesses, too. You can drop in an appointment scheduler, menus or open table blocks for restaurants. Squarespace is such an easy choice. And when you're ready to pay for a domain name or pay to publish your site and make it live, choose to use my promo code RAGUSIA. You'll save 10%. Thank you, Squarespace. And thank you, Tess Gingery. I mean, I know that tromping around the woods and looking for recently eviscerated baby deer carcasses is super glamorous work, but thank you anyways.